partnership with UNESCO and African Union uh, came together to organize this summit today to empower women in research and also to empower youth in research with a special focus on infectious disease and women's health. And uh, this is following our first year successful uh, UNESCO Mars, which we held in Geneva, Switzerland last year. The objectives of this year's summit is, as we said, to empower women in research. And for the first time, to emphasize on this objective, we are launching the uh, Best African Women Researcher Award. And we also have, a, we will have to launch for the second time the uh, uh, Best Young African Research Award. A greater emphasis has been put from all the governments on research and the role of technology and science in implementing the sustainable development goals. Thank you for joining us today. For the second time, Merck is partnering with UNESCO, the African Union and Cambridge University to empower young African researchers and to build research capacity across Africa. Today and tomorrow, we'll put a special emphasis on infectious diseases in women health, a topic of utmost importance. Women are at higher risk for many infectious diseases and have a more severe cause of illness than men. This is due to many factors, such as biological differences, social inequities, and restrictive cultural norms. The higher risk of women contracting infectious diseases affects children's health and well-being and consequently harms future generations. Therefore, efforts to recognize and reduce health disparities among women have particular relevance for global health. In science, women are vastly underrepresented in Africa as well in other regions of the world. UNESCO data shows that worldwide only 30% of all researchers are female. Therefore, one central objective of this conference is to further empower women in research. This is why we have created our Male Capacity Advancement Program. It aims to build healthcare and research capacity and to improve access to innovative healthcare solutions. It is now clear that lack of science, technology, and innovation capacity has hindered the attainment of several of the Millennium Development Goals, which we just completed before 2015. There are two key areas which must be addressed now to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. First, the lack of local capacity to perform high-quality research on neglected health needs. And secondly, the ineffectiveness of current mechanisms for transferring research into health solutions, which can be disseminated to those most in need. The changing health agenda raises new global and interconnected challenges which cannot simply be overcome with if the public and private sector remain separate. Fully functioning health systems require collaborations that sort of UNESCO and the Merck Group are currently undertaking. The private sector provides enormous employment opportunities globally. Besides medical professionals, this industry continuously creates demand for thousands of scientists and researchers, clinical technicians, ICT professionals, sales and marketing staff, as well as health insurance providers, among many other opportunities. A key part of UNESCO's mandate is the promotion of gender equality in science and everything else. Enabling women to train as researchers, Scientists or other research personnel is crucial in countries with sh shortages of these professionals. We have in the summer 200, more than 200 researchers from across Africa, from French-speaking countries as well as English-speaking countries and Portuguese-speaking countries and Arabic-African-speaking countries. We have from Senegal, Rwanda, Gabon, Benin, Congo, Cameroon, Gambia, Burkina Faso, Morocco, Niger, and Burundi. And we have also from English-speaking countries, from Namibia, South Africa, Ghana, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Zam uh, Zambia, Tanzania, Uganda, Malawi, Liberia, Botswana, and Ethiopia. We have from Angola and Mozambique and from Egypt. So actually, it's more than 35 maybe African countries. So it's a great 
summer to interact and to develop network which is needed. And to emphasize this network, we are going to launch a community blog online, which is uh, uh, for all researchers to interact and uh, uh, share information and knowledge with each other, their peers in Africa and beyond. The theme for this year's UNESCO America Summit is entitled Infectious Diseases and Women's Health, which I believe is apt and timely, with the purpose of facilitating the building of research capacity to address public health emergencies of infectious causes. This is to mean that, apart from enjoying the scientific forum, this summit is an opportunity for the scholars to discuss and outline guiding principles for policymakers on how to translate knowledge into actions. As part of the summit, I'm also glad to note and appreciate the organizers' plan to award fellowships in recognition of the participant scientific contribution. And for the first time, as already other keynote speakers mentioned, a specific award for Best African Female Researchers Award. This is definitely a good news because this kind of recognition encourages the development of models for other women to emulate and increase in their commitment to engage in research work and provide leadership to the betterment of Africa's health sector. It is a known fact that encouraging and supporting researchers, researchers is also enhancing the development endeavors of the sector. Specific to African female researchers, who are the key drivers of health in Africa. Empowering and advancing their contribution should be a priority in our health sector development plans. I declare that the second UNESCO Mars is officially open. Thank you. Industry has got money. I told you we spent 1.7 billion on R&D work alone last year, and we do this every year increasingly <clears throat> because R&D is very, very expensive. Um, and we also want to widen this net to, the, to Africa and, of course, with a focus on women. Not only, but also particularly on women. Uh, and what we can do, we saw, we saw Rebecca. She is a good example of what we can do. We can support uh, young, gifted researchers, uh, of course, with financial means, because they all have to live somehow, but also, and far more important, of course, with, the, with passing on the knowledge we have. And we have got a lot of knowledge and experience gathered in the 340 years of Mac history. Uh, and that we want to pass on. So our main task will be, one, to have these programs, yeah, the capacity advancement programs, to advance capacity in young researchers, in young nurses, in young doctors as well, on specific uh, diseases like diabetes, uh, which is an area we are active in. And of course, the next step is then to really promote young gifted scientists to to teach them the cutting edge of research. As government, we have um, promoted girls to actually undertake sciences by giving them a little more points at university to bring them at par with the men. We have about 120 doctors qualifying annually from just one university, the oldest university, that is Makere College, Makere University. And out of these 120, only 20% 20 are actually women. But you find that, unfortunately, the women that qualify because of the various tasks that women must undertake in their life. You are a mother, you have to balance work, and sometimes it's also difficult for them to engage in research. So this has, in a way, um, reduced the number of women researchers, but we've come up with uh, specifically a fund, the FSF, SFF, to promote uh, women, it's the female scholarship fund, to actually promote women researchers, and of course, there are also other interventions. Merck, qui est quand même uh, qui est une industrie et de, fabrique, de fabrication de médicaments, qui aujourd'hui s'intéresse à la santé des groupes les plus vulnérables. Et j'ai nommé uh, les femmes et les enfants. Vous savez, au Niger, l'un des taux de fécondité le plus élevé au monde. Quand on a fait la moyenne 
chaque femme au Niger a à peu près sept enfants et demi. The main cause of this problem, which is infertility in Africa, is due to in untreated infectious diseases and due to lack of research in that department. One couple every four couples of uh, in Africa are suffering from infertility, while 85% and more can be prevented because it's due to untreated infectious diseases. Thanks to Mark and UNESCO for partnering with countries and empowering women in research. I want to congratulate all of the women in this room today who are standing toe to toes with their male counterparts and wanting to go into the field of research. By empowering women, you are empowering your community, you are empowering your country, you are empowering the world at large. It is often said that if you want something said, ask a man. But if you want something done, ask a woman. So let us continue to empower the women so that we can have more women researchers. Esas dificultades que hacen que las chicas lleguen eh, como empiezan en pie de igualdad con los chicos a la universidad es precisamente lo que les acabo de, de comentar. Cuando se embarazan ya saben que el embarazo es un, no solamente un riesgo sino que si la matrícula. I would like to start this panel discussion by a question about uh, policy. Earlier we heard about the issue of funding in Africa, that this is the main uh, obstacle for supporting research. Um, I would like to uh, basically open a discussion with you about uh, another uh, aspect of, of policy, and that is the organizational structures of, of governments. Um, what is your view on the organizational structures that support scientific research. As a country, the government has started to expand its higher education platform. When I was a college student, we had only two universities in this country of 100 million. But right now, we have 44 public universities. Our universities are... Thank you. Our universities are the primary centers where we conduct research of any sector. But one of the challenges we face as a country is, probably which is the case in many other African countries, is funding first, and the skilled and trained human resource second, and infrastructure third, and fourth is the research culture. In Sierra Leone, it's more empowerment to women because the new ethics committee we have is actually headed by a Dr. Aisha Ibrahim Fofana. So women are not sitting down anymore. We are moving forward because we need to change things that are, is happening in Africa. Sierra Leone, actually for a research to be effective, you have to take into consideration that um, the level of um, illiteracy is high. But one thing that we got to understand is that when you reach out to the women and you talk to them in the local dialects, you talk to them in a language that they understand, they are able to convince their husbands, they are able to convince their, their children. So we put everything in place for researches to be done. We have to reach the common people. We have to reach the communities. I really believe that communication is very important in research, communication of research results to the normal community members, to media, to everyone who is not research expert, because sometimes the language and the research uh, uh, 
uh, terms are very difficult for someone who is not uh, a scientific uh, background to understand. And then you, we, must, we miss a lot uh, or a big opportunity of benefiting and having health solution of this great research we invested our human resources and our financial resources on. So this is really great. I, I, I thank you very much, Mrs. Cooper, for, for this. Generally, it's not only the media, the, our government. Professor Afork and I were in the university complaining on our government regarding research budget and like. Now we are part of the government. <laughs> <laughs> there is no more to complain on our government. So I think we are in a better position again to, to uh, work on research budget and research undertaking and like. The uh, Angolan government invested about uh, uh, two, uh, uh, million, two, $200 million for infrastructure, infrastructure of research in agriculture, in health, and fishery. But what happened? What happened? No, 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 no. The problem is that when we, we, we bought all this equipment, we realized that we don't have the human resources. We have to start with the human resources, not the money, but the human resources. Thank you. We are talking about empowering Africa in research, but I think we need to look deeply at what we mean by research, because research is a continuum. It's a spectrum. It starts at one end, it goes to another end, and it depends on what you're talking about. If you talk about industry and why they don't want to take R&D on, is because if you look, you will see most of our industries are not based on an R&D foundation. They are more of packaging and processing industries where R&D may not appeal to them.